morning world. This is Indie Life Adventures, giving you a recap of day seven in Japan. So it is morning time. We're in the intercontinental Osaka who provided us with these, um, are these kimonos? I think so. We think so. We're not really sure. And we think we put them on correctly. I, I don't know if I, I made myself a nice oh, little bow. Monos or what's the other one? Uh, it starts with a Y. A Y? I don't even know. But we decided we would try on the clothes and film our day seven recap this morning while we have our uh, Nespresso coffee. Well, I can't so. live without knowing. I don't want to be incorrect. Oh. Hang on just a sec. Am I going to keep going while you do You're some You're going to keep going. Yeah, i got to research okay. this. So he's going to research to make sure we're using the right word. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we did yesterday. So yesterday was a, a pretty light day. We relocated from Tokyo to Osaka. And so we had to figure out how to use the Shinkansen. Is that how it, it's called? The Shinkansen? Shinkansen, I think. Shinkansen? Yeah. So the bullet train. And we weren't sure. Like, we feel like we're getting the subway system figured out, but we weren't quite sure about how to get the tickets to the bullet train. And so after doing a lot of just online looking around, it seemed like it made the most sense just to buy them at the train station rather than buying them ahead of time. That way you didn't have to stick to a particular schedule. So unlike the subway where you just hop on and hop off at your leisure, for the Shinkansen, you have to have a very specific ticket for a very specific time for a very specific train. So we decided to just splurge and go with the green car. So that's considered like the first class version. But I will say that I honestly think had we done a traditional ticket, it would have been absolutely fine. From everything I could see, the biggest difference between the two types of tickets were the space you had in your seat and the level of comfort in your seat. And so you could see as the train would go by and you'd look in the windows and you could see the two different seats. But for such a short trip, I mean, it was a less than a three hour train ride. We'd have been fine with either seat, but it was kind of fun to try the first class, even though, because uh, it really wasn't that much more money to upgrade the tickets. So what did you learn about what these are called? Um, Yukata. Oh. I believe. With a Y or a U? Y. Are they just like bathrobes? Y-U-K-A-T-A. -A -A? Well, uh, they're not just bathrobes. They're, you know, like houseware. Houseware. Okay, yeah. houseware. So we're coming to you live in our Japanese houseware. So I already forgot the word for it. Yukata. Yukata. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's not a lot of differences really between the two. But mm -hmm. I think the kimonos are generally made of silk. Oh, and you probably wear those out and then maybe wear these in the house? Perhaps, you know. We don't really know. We're learning That's as a little we more go. fancy though. Yeah, silk out, linen in. Okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I was blabbing on and on about the bullet train. How about um, you share I was share busy some... trying not to let them see my bare legs. Oh, I don't I know give them <laughs> not the camera would catch that or not, but uh, so what do you think of the bullet train? Oh, it's super comfy. Um, man, we needed those in America, right? Why don't we have that form of transportation? Like, I understand we have Amtrak, right? But I don't know what top speed of Amtrak tops out at, I have no idea. But I downloaded, um, a speedometer app on the phone before we hopped on the bullet train. Most sand tracks do about 80, I think. You think so? Yeah, yeah. So on our top speed of this trip, we got to 178 miles per hour and it felt so smooth. Like you could not tell you were going that fast. Right. And just another example of where it feels like Japan has the edge on us. Like, it was so simple. This train system goes all over the country. Why don't we have this in America? I don't know. We've got the monorail at Disneyland. <laughs> but the bullet train, highly recommend. It was nice. <laughs> we learned a lot at the train station because I was, I was, I guess, a little concerned with just making sure we knew exactly where our train was and where to get on. 
And we ended up boxing ourselves in because I was so eager to just recon the route to make sure we knew where we were going. Because once, when you were outside, like we bought our ticket and then you had to go through the turnstiles. And we had like an hour from when we bought our ticket to when the train left. And when you're on the outside of the turnstiles, you have every option of restaurant, bar, tons of stuff. But once you pass the turnstiles, they had things there, but it, it was, for a novice, it was a little deceiving. Like, I thought we had just as many options on the inside of the turnstile, but we didn't. Once we went in, I don't think we could leave again, and so we were limited for that hour to choose. Um, they had, like, little gift. It looked like almost stuff you would buy, like a packaged souvenir of... Um, Maybe sweet treats or something. Yeah, it was like food food items that you might buy as a, a gift on your way to see somebody. Yes. You know? But then they also sold food items for consumption on the train. And so it was a whole lineup of bento boxes and different beverages. And you bought them not to consume there in the station, but once you were on the train. And so we each picked out our own bento box. Um, no idea what this stuff was we were eating. No idea. I mean, we probably could have looked and it would have told us... A little bit. Because it right. almost was like when you get a Valentine's Day chocolate box and you would mm -hmm. think on the inside yeah. it would tell you what each of the <clears throat> items were because you opened it up and it had all the compartments of the different types of things but no idea what we were eating. Some of it you could tell it was chicken or fish or acorn squash or a mushroom but so much else you're like, I don't know what that is. Uh, pickled this and a yeah. pickled that. And the boxes were cold. Yes. <laughs> um, but they didn't, I don't even know if they were refrigerated. Like, it's so hard. Yeah, I don't know. So I we're eating chicken and fish that may or may not have been refrigerated that we hung on to for well over an hour before we got on the train to consume it. But I just went with it and trusted that the Japanese have all this figured out. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. And I devoured <laughs> mine on the train. Um, Nick, Nick was a little more picky about what he chose to eat and I was so full because I, I hate to waste food and uh, I would have eaten the rest of his too but I was so full. I ate a lot of mine. Yeah, at least half. Yeah, and I tried a little bit of everything. Yes. Minus the seaweed surprise. Yeah, I tried the seaweed surprise and I don't know what that was. It was like a little folded envelope of, of seaweed that had something in it. It was probably like squid guts or something probably i i <laughs> ate it it was a little strange but not nearly as bad as the shad gizzard sushi i had nothing has been that bad yet and not that it tasted that bad it was just such a weird feeling in my mouth so so yes so we're on the bullet train just like all the subways it's so quiet so quiet and uh we did we we upgraded our tickets we did so we got to sit in the green car and um that just means you get a little bit more leg room and there was a substantial amount of leg room. and a few less people right so i think instead of having like maybe four on each side or three on each side it's yeah it's i think two the standard on each side. car is three seats an aisle and two seats okay and for the green car, it was two seats, an aisle, and two seats. And then there also was a uh, attendant who sold merchandise up and down the aisles where oh, you yeah. could buy drinks. I think it was just drinks that you could buy. I don't know because I it, couldn't log in. Yes, they had a, a brochure in the seat, box, seat back pocket that had a QR code to see the menu. But it wouldn't work. It just kept saying, like, forbidden, 404. And so we couldn't yeah. see, but we had brought food and uh, each of us had a beer that we brought on the train. And truthfully, I didn't need anything else. Because yeah, even before getting on the train, I bought myself a hot matcha latte from a vending machine. It was really, that was a cool vending machine. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Super hot latte. Just as good as any you'd get from a store, I think. So... Um, so yeah. yeah, my only complaint about the bullet train was that it was a bit stuffy. It was kind of warm. There was no, I couldn't find a way to control the fans like you would on an airplane. I know you found somewhere like a vent along the... I think that was it. That was it. But it was yeah. a bit hot on there. 
I think had you opened that while you were sitting on that in that seat, you would have been much more comfortable. Okay. So yeah, we ended up switching to let him by the window, and we did pass because it on. she was sleeping, and if she was going to sleep, she might as well just sit on the inside. That's true, because I didn't sleep so well the night before in the capsule hotel. So on the train again, after again, it was what hot and stuffy. Hot and stuffy. Yeah. May notice a trend here that she's a little pampered. Which usually I am not at all picky about sleep. But it's just the combination of really hard mattresses and maybe a little lack of airflow. And plus he's like a heater. You're warm. <laughs> <laughs> she had the option to sleep in her own pod. I did. I could have slept in my own pod, but yeah. I felt so alone. Yeah. So, well, mm. um, do you want to talk about the Mount Fuji? Train. Well, I want to, want to make sure we talk all about the bullet train. Oh, okay. Yep. Let's rewind, yeah. back it up, go for it. I don't know if there's anything else to say about the bullet train. <laughs> it was fast and it was comfortable. And it was alarming whenever the oncoming train would pass you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because so. you had no idea <laughs> when another train was coming. And so when I was sitting right by the window and you're just trucking along at 175 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, whoosh, another train comes in the opposite direction and it kind of gives a little shimmy. Yeah, just, just a little push of air between it the two as, as it comes across. It startled me yeah. each time. <laughs> it's fast. So fast. It's 170 miles per hour times two. Yes. And then just seeing the countryside out the window, we did see some boat marinas. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because that was um, missing from Tokyo Bay when we did our walk to Team Lab Planets. There were, we crossed three rivers and only saw like one boat. And it was like a boat you could rent to go on a dinner cruise. So it was like a business. But didn't see any fishing boats, pleasure boats, no anchorages, moorings, marinas, nothing. Yeah. But on the train ride, we were sitting on the Mount Fuji side of the train and if you sit on the other side, then I think you could see the ocean. And um, But even on our side, you could see where there were the canals and then there were marinas. But there were no, I didn't see a single sailboat. They were like small motorboats and they were all like uniform looking. Like not a lot of diversity in the type of boat. My guess is they were probably 30 feet long speed boats. I'm not sure what you saw. Oh, what did you see? I just saw some motorboats, <laughs> like some some day, you know, fishing little yeah. motorboats that were probably like, I don't know, 20 feet long, 15, and it 15 20 feet, you know. It wasn't a lot. We just noticed it because we were yeah. looking for them. Yeah. But, but they're all very plain. Yeah, very plain, white, almost uniform. Yeah, very much so. Nothing shiny, nothing opulent. Uh, and that's something I think you notice around here is that there is a uh, strong acuity towards social uh, conformity, right? Mm. I mean, everybody, like the, the whole idea, it seems like everything is like, does this meet what's, you know, what's for the greater good, right? Mm. You know, like the signs on the sidewalk that say no smoking and walking, uh, no... What was it else to say on the sidewalk? It was like no, um, not talking or walking, but uh, no cell phones. I think it, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'll have signs on the sidewalks that say no cell phone and walking. And, and then even in the subway station, I don't remember the exact verbiage, but the signage is always like, consider your neighbor, like consider the atmosphere and the experience. Right. Like don't do these things because <clears throat> you don't want to interfere with someone else's peace. Right, right. And that's even, um, it goes so far as to uh, what you might ask is the line of like freedom versus like personal freedoms versus um, the greater good and what, what social freedoms they give you. So, um, and I think a lot of, if you, you can look at it two ways, like you're like, oh, they're holding me down or um, uh, they're not letting me do what I want to do or perhaps what they're trying to do is uh, prevent harm on a, on, a, on a larger scale. For example, I'll give you one. Um, there is, and, and, and the states are probably the same way in some places, but uh, I know it's something weird that I noticed, probably won't, most people won't, but um, 
the faucet water temperature, if you turn it all the way to hot, you cannot burn yourself. Oh, here? Yeah. At least every place that I've been. Oh, I haven't noticed. I haven't turned it all the way to hot. Yeah. Like you can get it all the way to hot and you're probably not going to burn yourself. Now, I'm not saying every place is like that, but from what I've noticed so far, um, it's like, now you ask, okay, well, do they not trust me to be able to control the temperature to the heat that I wanted to? Or is it um, their propensity to not want to cause harm to somebody else, right? And I think yeah. I think it's probably the latter. They, they would rather not have somebody harm themselves, even though they may want it a little bit hotter, right? Yeah. You know, um, if they had the choice personally or something like that, so... And I truly just don't know enough about Japanese culture to make any assumptions. Um, one thing that did surprise me whenever we were at Bar Hermit. Yeah. And we were talking with Utah, our bartender. Um, and it came up that we remembered his name so well because he I was I think it's asking, actually Yuda. Yuda? Okay. But it's basically the same. Because whenever we were talking about what states to visit in the United States and I was telling him how much I really liked Utah, he's like, that's my name. And then he spelled it. It was like Y-T-A-H or something. Yeah. So it might be pronounced Utah. But one thing he was telling us, because we were talking about, you know, what does everybody do for fun? And, uh, and he said that Japanese have a tendency and he said this word and it was a word I'd never heard of. And he's like, and he, it was like a phrase or a saying. And so he looked it up on his phone and shared it. And it was essentially to work yourself to death. Right, right. And yeah. it was so sad. Like, it was almost as if that was really a true thing of what he had to... Like, like it was saying that they don't have a lot of free time because they literally work themselves to death. Right, right. And we were just, you know, during our conversation, I think we're just making conversation and observations i think what he his observation had mentioned was how americans seem to be so happy right mm, that's exactly right yeah. yeah he was talking about whenever he was there for a year he just noticed that americans were so happy and then we were like oh are are the japanese not happy and he's like no we're and he said that word and then he it was like they work themselves to death which i guess we're observing the product of that, like without a doubt. This right, country, for sure. I mean, it is so clean. There's no graffiti. I mean, hardly any homelessness. I think we've seen two people who could qualify as homeless. Everything is so efficient and organized. And maybe that's the product of people who just constantly work. Right. I think, I think it's um, a concept of traditional Japanese values, right? They, mm. they value hard work and um, the effort that people put towards um, their, their life and their family and society, right? And I, I just think, hope they get out and have some fun. Oh yeah, well, I, I think so too. But I think it, as you look around, um, you do notice people are out having a good time, especially, oh, yeah, especially like the, a, younger, the younger kids. Um, like last night, there was a group of kids uh, at a, at the, was at the mall. So we're like literally the <clears throat> hotel is attached to, um, a what is it? Osaka, Osaka Grand Center. Front, I think is what they call okay. it or something like that. Anyway, it's, it's two a, towers. it's not just two towers. It's, uh, oh, that's true. <laughs> it's a, a full connection of multiple towers and venues that are connected either by, uh, skywalks or, um, physically connected, you know, foundationally um as one giant complex mm -hmm. and anyway it's it's like a giant mall um so we're in a very uh large commercial area oh yes and it it's not as sprawling as you see in like america where everything's just very big and, and wide open. Where you drive to all the stores. Right, and you Here, drive you to open, walk you to walk them to them and then things stacked on, you know, floor after floor after floor after floor. So, um, and basement levels Yeah, and too. basements. Like we, you get pretty far, because a lot of those basements connect to the subway. <laughs> yes, and it but, was funny because we were going out last night just to kind of look for a bite to eat. Oh yeah, yeah. And I don't even think we went a full block. No. And we probably have 
I mean, I don't think I'm exaggerating if I say there's 50 different food options to choose from mm -hmm. within a block. Yeah. Because when you add up all the food options on nine stories up, two stories down, and within just a little bit of walking space, like there's so many options. And the one American business, because we've seen lots of the, like, we've seen McDonald's, Burger King, Subway, Wendy's. KFC, Wendy's, um, Domino's Pizza. Yep, yep. Not a lot of them, but a little of them. But the one American business we have seen over and over and over, which I would think is probably the most popular American business here, is... Starbucks. Starbucks. There are Starbucks everywhere, but there's also tons of Japanese coffee shops. So by no means does Starbucks have a corner on the market, but they are the most prevalent American company I've observed. Right. Yes. Yeah. But kids having a good time. We were, when we were looking for something to eat, we ended up deciding on Burger King. Right. So, you know, uh, Every once in a while, you just need a little taste of home, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was hungry, and I didn't want to... It was at the point of time at night, I, we needed to get back, and we needed to um, get the other couple videos done. And I was like, I didn't want to stop in a place and wait and order and just, you know, spend time. So I wanted to get something to eat and be able to move on. So... Uh, there was a McDonald's on one floor, and then the Burger King was on the same floor that we had come up to, so mm -hmm. we just walked over the Burger King. Now, as we walked out, we noticed that there was some commotion going oh, on. Oh, a bit of commotion. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a, um, a girl band, right? Yeah, they were having live music in like the courtyard with a stage and like a whole production, and four young girls, like I bet they must have been, what, 15, 16? I don't know. I don't know. They were teens. Yep. All dressed the same in like this very elaborate, white, beautiful outfit doing song and dance routine. And the crowd that had, and I thought this was the most interesting part because to me, if you had a a girl band of that age, to me, the audience would be also girls of that age, like screaming. But this audience was males and they were like teenage males, teenage males singing the songs, doing the dances. And they had these little, um, little, uh, glow sticks, glow sticks on their fingers. And as the girls were up there on the stage doing their dance routine, the guys were in the audience, like mimicking their moves. Like they knew all the dances. Oh and, yeah. And then there'd be a pause where the, the girls would sing a line and the guys would all chant the next part of the line. Like they were having a good time. Oh yeah. And they, they had the dance moves down yeah. and they were into it. So. Like we had just stumbled upon a little outdoor concert. Yeah, so it, was. it was. We ate our Whopper and observed <laughs> the the scenery. That's and... right. Oh yeah. So let's talk about Burger King, right? Oh yeah. yeah. So as we were eating and watching our uh, live entertainment, um, <laughs> what what did... You, you got a um, I wasn't junior near, Whopper, right? Yeah, I wasn't nearly as hungry because I'd eaten so much of my bento box. So I got what appeared to be like a Whopper Junior, but with mushrooms. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And then I got something like a, it was a Nika, spicy Nika burger or something like that, double, yeah. But it wasn't even like, because on the menu they have the one pounder. Right. So it wasn't that one, but it no. was still humongous. Like yeah. a very large hamburger. And so I, I don't know exactly what came on it, um, it was good. It had, man, it was like a sauce. It was really mm -hmm. saucy, um, with like spice. So I think it was like a sriracha chili sauce with some sort of crunchy chip like thing yeah. that they had sprinkled on top of it, smashed onto the rest of the burger. I don't want to say smash, but, um, but it tasted like a Whopper. Yeah, it did. It, mine tasted just like a Whopper Junior. The French fries, the fries were exactly the, the same. The fries were exactly the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just a little different take, a little, really kind of like a messy burger. But um, but overall, it was pretty good. I took a bite of his burger. It was spicy. I it, was like, oh, you're going to have heartburn. Yeah, it hit the spot, really, because I was just needing some something fast and easy. And and yeah. I had picked up my meal, my bento box. So And I, like I said, she's, what, I ate, I ate about half of it. And I tried every little piece of the bento box, but it just didn't stick with me and besides sushi doesn't stick with me very long anyway it's like mm -hmm. you eat sushi and an hour later you're hungry again so 
Anyway, um, yeah, that was Burger King. So we decided we'd head back to the hotel so we could get um, started on our videos, right? Yeah, trying to play catch up now that we've got such a nice room. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of which, before I forget, um, if you watched the last video, you'll notice it just abruptly ends. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, that's okay. I think what happened was you may be wondering if whatever was outside got us. Oh, yes. But, uh, but no, there's nothing outside, nothing got us. It was the day six recap it was video day that six, ended yeah, abruptly. The day six recap. And so uh, basically we just, the battery died. And mm -hmm. we were lucky enough that we got most of it uh, just before we wrapped up the, the video. And yeah. rather than try to splice and recap and, you know, finish up the end, it was close enough, like who cares? Yep, yep. We so, just, it was still a long video. The one thing that was cut off that I'll repeat here, as you can tell, we are in like a magnificent hotel. This is the Intercontinental Osaka, by far the nicest hotel I've ever been in. And the previous night we had been in the Capsule Hotel, <laughs> which was essentially, uh, it felt like uh, they had built capsules out of plywood. And so now having the juxtaposition of the two lodging arrangements back 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 to back like makes me appreciate this one so much more and so uh i'm definitely glad we stayed at the hostel and i do think it was um perfect timing to have these two lodgings be one after the other yeah yeah the, the hostel was great um for what it was oh yeah and I don't know. I would still think that at some point we should really try a true capsule hotel. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a little different when you're trying to make accommodations together, right? Yes, so. it is. But as we're recapping day seven, like the big ticket items were the bullet train ride and then getting to this hotel. Because once we got to this hotel, I didn't want to leave. Like there's a whole city out there to explore, but it was just so nice. To have room and space and we went and uh looked at the gym whoa that gym rivals any um i mean hell even some paid for gyms like this i mean it has everything you could possibly imagine along with the swimming pool i'm not going to say it's olympic size but it's a big huge swimming pool with lanes there's the hot tub, then there's a whole nother section of like the Japanese baths. And all right. of this is just complimentary with our room. Yeah. So today, uh, after we go down to the buffet breakfast, we really want to try out some of these amenities and also find some time to get out and see Osaka because um, Osaka Castle is nearby. And that's... Luckily, we have a few days while we're here. Yes. To... So we have today and we have tomorrow. We don't have to check out until like four o'clock tomorrow, right? Yeah, we get to have a late checkout. Um, not even tomorrow. We have one more night. Really? We get to sleep here three nights. So we slept here last night, tonight, and tomorrow night we'll sleep here. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we are staying here. Yeah, so we have a few more days. So oh. that's nice. Yes. Like, I'm just thrilled to experience the hotel. And even yesterday, we went to happy hour on our way. Um, whenever we left, we went to happy hour, which they have in a very, very nice hotel bar. And we just had one cocktail before going out and finding something to eat. Yep. And, uh, but no, I am so comfortable here and don't feel the urge to just race out and go see the city. Like I think we'll find a manageable pace here because truthfully, after spending so much time in Tokyo, I'm shopped out, restauranted out, drinked out, like just relaxing, going to use the gym, the sauna, the hot tub, like I'm looking forward to just chilling. She needs some spa time. Although I don't need some spa time. <laughs> they do sell some services and we were just looking at the menu and you can get a 180 minute um, full service spa, massage, facial, and it ended up costing like $600. <laughs> I think it was like four, four 80 i think oh so not quite okay sorry yeah. i overestimated that needless to say yeah. i don't intend to purchase that i think with all the free amenities that come with the room i'm perfectly content right but yeah any other things to catch up on day seven hmm day seven well the gym i think 
Yeah, that's I'm definitely going to fit, fit that in while we're here. Because they do have a bathroom scale in the room, which yeah. we both tried out this morning. It's not as bad as I would have thought. I don't I'm think I've 70. lost. 70.5 kilograms which is 155 pounds which is what i like to stay at so yeah. i think all the steps we've been doing have helped with all the food we've been consuming yeah lots of uh lots of calorie burning right yes although yesterday was the least amount of steps we've gotten this whole trip because we really just rode the train and then hung out in the hotel true but we still hit our step count our step yeah goal, i right? think i ended the day with maybe twelve thousand steps not yeah. terrible. Not terrible, but not the 20,000 threshold we've been exceeding every day. Right. And not the 30,000 that I hit. Mm -hmm. Man, that's nice. Yes. But so, uh, but, so yeah, I uh, I'll definitely look forward to the gym. It's yes. really nice. It's it's bigger than what we have in our, our apartment complex. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I don't know. We'll see. We were speaking of apartments. We were talking like if, if this layout, like we could live here. I guess oh, yeah. the only thing that's missing is a kitchen. There's no kitchen. Yeah. But this layout, I mean, it's I would be content. Yeah, it's nice. It's amazing. This room is truly incredible. Like absolutely comfortable, luxurious. This morning we just. From the bed, pressed the button and lifted the blinds and could just see the... I mean, right now we're being able to watch the sunrise and the city come alive and the fog in the distance. And I really like it here. Yeah, and I'll take you guys to the window so you can see out. Oh, that'll be perfect. Yeah, we can close with that window view. But it is. Today's going to be a good day. I think it is. Yes. I'm excited to go try the buffet breakfast. I'm ready for some more coffee, too. Yes. Well... Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, hopefully we wore the outfits correctly. I really had no idea whether the knot is in the front or the back, so I went with the bow on the side. But you look majestic, my love. Why, thank you. You wear it very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll conclude with sharing our view with you, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow. All right, hang on just a sec. <sighs> And that is the view. There's the Ferris wheel. You're going to catch a glare of the sun probably, but... Uh, I see you in the background, Dory. Oh, I'll move No, you're fine. Away. I'm just... There was just a glare. It's just beautiful. All right. We'll see you guys later.